Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and welcome to an awesome episode of Chasing History brought to you by Arrowheads.com and Smoky Mountain Relic Group. We're here today with Tom Capitana and Tom, man, this, you were able to get without a doubt the coolest fossil I've ever held in my life. It's, it's awesome. You know, uh, uh, and, and it's it's something that you wouldn't think would be interesting. You, know, you wouldn't really think that you know, bacteria could be interesting, but that's actually where we all come from. You know, these are fossil stromatolites. Now, Tom, what, what is a stromatolite for those that don't know? Well, stromatolites are like cradolites, like algal mats that live in the ocean floor. And these use chemicals and sunlight to, to use the local minerals and energy to create oxygen. They oxygenate the planet. So they're like little bacterial colonies that just all they do is just produce oxygen. That's right. Wow, they do other things too. Like they're the primordial slime that oozes in which life arose. So they are the like you're saying the primordial slime in which all life on Earth came from, basically. Absolutely, yeah. That's just ah, that's so cool, and it's hard to fathom that everything within us. In a tree, in a bug, everything started with these fossils, started with these stromatolites. Yes. And you were able to collect uh, the, the oldest known stromatolite ever. Yes. We actually call them microbialites or microbial mats because these are earlier than the actual stromatolites. So this is like this is before stromatolites. Yes, stromatolites are normally conal domal structures. Okay. And this is unusual. It was actually you know, it, it, it existence in the slime at the bottom of these highly sulfurous um, um, carbon, high carbon oxide volcanic environments. So what we've got here, you can see here, so here's the, like, what's called barite or barium sulfate that came out through hydrothermal springs. And there you can see these laminations here, that, those slime mats in which life arose. So what this part right here is, it, it, this is basically the bedrock. The bedrock, rock yes. in which, you know, this this microbial slime yes. attached itself to. Yes. And so if you got, oh, check this out. This is, oh, this is cool. Is, okay, so right here you've got the bedrock of it. And then these little wavy layers all through here, these are all fossils yeah. of that bacteria. Yeah, the bacterial mix. And it is this. And this is what's so cool, guys. This fossil right here. This is where all of this... Touch yourself right now. It's okay. Touch yourself. Just, you can pinch yourself. You know, pinch up. Look outside. Look. Check out a tree. See that tree? Pinch yourself. Started here. I don't care who you are. That is awesome, man. God, that's so cool. So, all right, let me ask you this: on the dating of it, you know, how do you date this? How, how, do, how do you know that it's you know, as old as as it is? Well, all sediments have zircon crystals associated with them. These zircons okay. are they're thrown out by volcanoes, volcanic activities. All the oceans and all the seas, all the dirt, ground everywhere has zircons in it. So we look at the zircons in these rocks. And we look at the uranium lead isotope, the ratio of uranium inside the crystal and the, the amount of lead. Lead can't penetrate the, your um, zircon crystals. Any, any lead that's there only came from the breakdown of uranium. So we look at the half-life, we can actually date the rocks to 3.49 billion years. By looking at the zircon crystals. By looking crystal. at the zircon. We look, look inside the zircon crystals and we, we measure the amount of uranium, uranium and the amount of lead. And that tells us that uranium will break down to lead and the half-life of that will actually give us a day. It's a very, very accurate day anyway. Okay. So, see, guys, you know, there are other ways other than carb carbon dating or thermoluminescence yeah. dating. In order to get, you know, a, an understanding of, you know, how far back in time you can go, when you get into this deep past, this deep time, you know, you use zircon crystals. Yeah. And zircons are, are very, very hardy, very, very sturdy. You know, this little crystal, and correct me if I'm wrong, this little crystal can exist inside of a rock. That rock can completely erode away. The crystal's still there. Another rock can form back over that zircon. That rock can erode away, but that zircon's still there. And then another rock can form on top of it. Correct? That's right. Zircons are nearly as hard as diamonds. So yeah, and they can just survive. They're, they're tough, tough things. So they're very good for dating, very accurate dating. I mean, deep time geology. Your radium lead is the best way to do it. Now you were talking about zircons. You've got some zircon uh, uh, from the Jack Hills uh, yeah. uh, here, correct? Yeah. Now what's neat about this is 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 now this from the Jack Hills. This is what was used to date the Earth, correct? Yes, yes. From this side. Yes. Can you explain how the, you know, just just to say to you, how did they know to find the crystals out of this particular rock? Well, you, you don't. You just you just start looking at rocks. And you start looking for zircon crystals. So as the, the geologists go out in the field, they're always trying to date the geology out in the field. So they'll go out, take a rock sample, flush it down, look for these zircons, and start dating them. And in these rocks, these are actually three billion year old rocks. They started measuring the zircons. They found zircons up to 4.4 billion years old. You were talking about planetary creation. I mean, really, really early stuff. This stuff was just thrown up by volcanoes and eroded and rushed, washed around and, and resedimented into 3 billion year old rocks. But the zircons were here 3 billion years old and up to 4.4 billion years old. See, that's what's cool. Is, you know, 
these little zircon crystals, you know, they were they formed and they got trapped inside of a rock, and then erosion of volcanic activity and all this stuff came about, destroyed that rock, but the zircon survived. Another rock formed encapsulating that zircon. It got destroyed by volcanic activity and, and earthquakes and, and erosion, and then it was destroyed, but the zircon survived, and then it got encapsulated into this rock here, which, you know, this is among the oldest rocks on Earth. Yes, we know of. I mean, that Kessin Nice, that's the oldest rock on the, on the planet. So that's 4.2 billion year old rock for a rocket being re metamorphosed. So this, rock, this is the oldest rock this on the planet. This is the oldest the rock. So this is the oldest crystal. So the oldest zircon crystals are in the Jack Hill zircons. The oldest rock is from the Kessin Nice out of the um, Northwest Territory of Canada. Now, so this rock doesn't have zircon? It has zircons in it too. Okay. But the zircons are dated to 4.2 billion years. Okay. But these are 4.4 billion. Okay. So I still hold it again. Ah, I see. Now, now, here's another thing: is is you know, all right, how can you, how, how can there only be a few places on Earth where rock this old exists? And it's and, and I'll, I'll let you explain. Yeah, yeah. Most of the problem is sub subduction plate tectonics. Most of the old ancient crust has been resubducted and, and, and gone down into the uh, center of the Earth and been remolten and remelted. Only little bits of um of original crust float on the top of the Earth's surface, and that's primarily in in the northern island, northern part of Canada, Baffin Island, uh, Castanese area, and then also in Western Australia, which we have very, very old, deep time type geology. And so little floating platforms of rock. And that's what's awesome about the Earth is that a lot of people don't realize is that it is a literally a living uh, engine. This, the, the crust of the Earth is a living engine. What Tom's talking about is, is, is the subduction, about how plates, what we're standing on right now, what you're sitting on right now is actually moving. It's going up underneath another plate that somebody else is sitting on. And then that plate is spitting out somewhere else. This is where earthquakes come from. This is where volcanic activity comes from. This is our Earth alive. And what happens is, is that rock and everything in it gets sucked back down into the crust of the Earth and recycled and spit out and reused. And so that's why there's very few places, if you know, except in Australia, like you say, Bath and Island, where the oldest crust just it just hadn't had an opportunity to to to, to be subdued and to go back down into the core of the earth. And to me, that is awesome. And that the oldest that's this is the one that's been around the longest. And of all that, this is why Australia is so cool, guys. God, you feel lucky. Yeah, we have Man, great Australia, yeah, you guys are awesome. Uh, is not only do you have the oldest rocks, but also the oldest living fossils on Earth. And to be able to, to hold something and, and, and to check out something that literally where all life on Earth started. This is where we all started. You know, it, it, it just it's awe inspiring to think that you know all life on Earth started with this little rock right here. And this is something that you know you guys have only been able to get out recently. It was very hard to get, get took many years to get access to the location. We had to go get special permission permits to go to the site. We had to have GPS coordinates of everywhere we went, everywhere we collected, and every specimen had to be photographed by the museum or provided to the museum before they allowed it to export it. So, so a very sensitive area. So it's very sensitive and very selective and, yeah. and, and such an honor to be able to go in and collect these Absolutely. pieces. Absolutely, very unique opportunity. And you don't know if you'll probably never get to do it again. It's one off, yeah, very, very lucky. Yeah. yeah, that's just, oh, that's awesome, man. So, guys, uh, Tom, thank you so much. Well, pleasure to take your time. I appreciate it. Remember to check us out on Facebook. Remember to uh, to look us uh, come to the, come to the store. We'll never ever ever be on Twitter. I don't like Twitter. That's why. Uh, and you know, remember, you know, why do we do this? Why do we study history? It's because how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've been? And it's in studying and understanding the mistakes of the past to prevent the failures of the future. That's why history literally rocks. It. This is cool, man. Ah! Tom, thanks, dude. Cool stuff. I appreciate it. Great. History rocks. Woohoo!